everyone, welcome back to No Buts About It. If you're new to the channel, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. It really helps us out. We've now made it all the way through week two, and you know what that means. It's time for some water cooler analysis. We uh, kind of got what we expected regarding the Panthers and the Saints game, which wasn't much. There wasn't a lot that I saw where I was like, that's a good storyline. That's something that we're going to be talking about. Um, I was really hoping we would see some Bryce Young breakout stuff, but I didn't really see anything with that either. Uh, the main storyline from that game was actually how mediocre it ended up being. So we're not going to talk much about the Panthers or the Saints. Unfortunately, uh, just not a great game. I expected a little bit more maybe from a divisional primetime Monday night game. But the part of the game where I was the most excited was for the Monday night anthem, if I'm being honest. Now... Talking about the 815 AFC North matchup between the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Cleveland Browns is a completely different story. This game had a lot of hype coming into it already. It was a matchup that we talked about. Chuss mentioned during the full show yesterday that he wasn't sure that the Steelers would even be able to beat the Browns just because of the way the Browns looked last week against the Bengals and how the Steelers looked against the 49ers last week. Well, right out the gate, we got an exciting game. We had Deshaun Watson, who was supposed to prove that he was uh, just as good as he always was in this fair weather, uh, first fair weather game of the season. He wasn't going to have any issues, and right out the gate, we have a pick six. Deshaun Watson led Harrison Bryant a little bit too much on the pass, which resulted in Harrison Bryant kind of bobbling the ball. Um, it got passed around a few times before Alex Highsmith was able to come in and get what went down as an interception and get a pick six. So right out the gate, uh, I think it took like nine seconds off the clock. You've immediately got a turnover and a score for the Pittsburgh Steelers. That's kind of what we saw throughout the entire game. Um, Pittsburgh's defense just must have taken last week personally. They decided to come out and really show that they are for real, that they are a team that can be that should not be messed with on defense. Uh, Pittsburgh's offense wasn't fantastic. Kenny Pickett struggled. George Pickens wasn't able to um, be as dynamic as – Steelers fans might have liked to see, although he did hit a career high in yards, so that is a positive. Uh, just the Steelers' offense as a whole wasn't great. George Pickens was probably the person who looked the best with that career high that I just mentioned. However, on defense, TJ Watt was a menace all night. We heard his name being called all night like we're used to when we watch the Pittsburgh Steelers play. Not only that, T.J. Watt was able to hit a franchise record. He got his 81st and a half sack last night, which broke the franchise record for sacks by a Pittsburgh Steelers player. And not only that, what I found most impressive was he broke the record of James Harrison, who was a longtime Steeler. Uh, James Harrison did it in 14 seasons. He got 80 and a half sacks. T.J. Watt got 81 and a half in only seven seasons. So TJ Watt, younger brother of JJ Watt, obviously a very good football family, very fun to watch. Uh, unless you're watching him play your team, then you hate watching him because TJ Watt is probably putting your quarterback into the ground or just making your quarterback's life miserable in general. So looking at that game, uh, okay, T.J. Watt, you've already got a record. Fantastic. Um, what do you got for us on beating the Browns? Well, he also scored the game-winning point. Uh, scoop and score, Deshaun Watson fumbled. T.J. Watt picked it up and ran it into the end zone. So began the game and ended the game with points on defense. And like I said, yes, the Steelers won, but it was not because of the offense. It was because of the defense uh, T.J. Watt, fantastic game. A lot of people calling him the best defensive player in the NFL now. Um, others are saying it's still Aaron Donald. 
What do you think? Let me know down in the comments if you think TJ Watt is the best player in NFL in the NFL on defense right now. Then moving on to the second storyline that we have coming out of this game. It is not as exciting as TJ Watt, unfortunately. It's um, a sad, sad storyline, actually. And that is Nick Chubb. TJ Watt, uh, he was great on defense. The whole Steelers defense looked pretty great. But if there was one person that they didn't have an answer for, it seemed like it was Nick Chubb early on in the game. Nick Chubb had a few explosive runs already. I think he had 64 yards before he got injured. And this game, this injury has caused a lot of controversy because uh, it was caused by Minka Fitzpatrick, who was a safety for the Pittsburgh Steelers and is known for maybe being having a reputation of being a dirty player, which the Steelers franchise as a whole carries, but Minka specifically um, at this point. So uh, what I saw was as Nick Chubb was being tackled, Minka Fitzpatrick went to dive to help make the tackle, and this resulted in um, Nick Chubb's knee making contact with Minka's helmet, and the the injury ended up being so gruesome that they decided to not show it on TV. Did make its way to social media though, where I saw ESPN reporters requesting people take it down, requesting that it not be shared because of how gruesome it was. Um, it didn't. I, I did see the video. There was no bone penetration that I saw, but his knee was going the opposite direction of his foot, which is obviously not great, especially, yeah, just, it's not great. And so we see that um, Nick Chubb, very well-liked player. Uh, that happens. Minka Fitzpatrick was shaken up on the play as well. Um, he ended up getting up and being okay. But so Nick Chubb ends up being out for the season and some people are saying that he's out for his career now why is this injury so concerning couldn't he come back next year um easily i mean yeah it's gruesome but that right i mean people come back from worse or have come back from worse think about alex smith who almost died um i think the main concern here is we hear all the time nick chubb Running backs in general, longevity, they have a low shelf life. And Nick Chubb is a 2018 rookie. Um, he, he never showed any signs of slowing down as a player. Regularly had 1,000-yard seasons and seemed to be an exception to the rule. Well, now you've got he possibly a torn everything in his left knee. And his age, that might cause some problems for Nick Chubb in the future. Not only is his age an issue, but he also injured the same knee with a similar injury in his sophomore year of college back in 2015. So now you've got this gruesome looking injury, probably torn MCL, possibly ACL, every other tendon in the knee. Every, the knee looked shattered. Let me, let me, I'm not a doctor, but the knee looked shattered. And then you look at his age and you look at so there's so many other factors such as the injury and his age and just what running backs go through in the NFL. And you're like, maybe this is the end of Nick Chubb's career. And that's something that's really sad and made a lot of people angry. People immediately got on X and Facebook and other ins or other social media sites and were saying that this was a dirty hit by Minka. Minka needs to be fined. And I'm not, I'm not sure if it was a dirty hit. I think there was a lot of factors and moving parts going in, and it just ended very poorly. Um, let me know what you think down in the comments. Uh, do you think Minka Fitzpatrick intentionally ended Nick Chubb's season? Do you think he intentionally went for the knee? Uh, if you haven't, please like, comment, and subscribe. Those are this week's storylines.